Hey guys, so today I am back with a very, very highly requested video and that is a favorites video. I said I was going to do one of these on Twitter and it's been on my mind ever since. So here we are and I'm actually going to do top favorites of the year for 2019. Even though the year isn't over yet, it's November currently, but I have more than enough things to talk about. Let's get started. Starting off with fashion favorites, because I know this is a lot of you guys' favorite category, aside from horror movies, which I get a lot of questions about. So we're kicking things off with that today. So first I have my Ana Luisa jewelry, which I have been wearing a ton this year. And whenever I wear it in a video or in an Insta story or a post, you guys always ask me where it's from. They are so cute. They go with all my outfits. I'm wearing it right now. Now I have to be completely honest and say that I probably would have mentioned at least one of my Ana Luisa jewelry pieces in this video, even if they weren't very kindly sponsoring this mention. <laughs> Don't know how they'd feel about hearing that. <laughs> However, it does mean I was able to pick out two new pieces that are just, oh, so cute. They did not disappoint. First of all, we have the Good Luck necklace. I love pendants like this because they have such a classy and timeless look to them. It really stands out over something like a black high neck top, kind of like this. And the design reminds me of something that would like harness magic in a fantasy movie while still looking very chic and current. The Chloe ring I picked out because it looks like it was plucked right out of the 1970s. You guys know how I love my gold rings and this one has outranked some of my other cheaper ones because this one is really high quality and it won't stain my fingers or tarnish like some of my other cheaper rings do. And I thought this was really cool. Their products come from the same jeweler as Tiffany and Louis Vuitton. I truly can't recommend this brand enough, especially especially for a Christmas gift for your mom, your sister, or a friend. They have a wide variety of different styles that suit many different tastes, including mine, which is very picky. So if you do want to pick up anything from Ana Luisa, now is the time to do so because they have up to 25% off for Black Friday. So if you want to shop in the sale, make sure you use my link. It's right at the top of the description box below. And I will also put a list of my favorite pieces in the description box below if you want to check those out as well. My next fashion favorite are my Public Desire sneakers. I've been wearing these all the time. I'm sure you guys know by now. I got these because I wanted an alternative chunky white sneaker to my feeler disruptors. I really like the design of the sole and the eyelets for the laces. Eyelets? Is that the right word? They kind of remind me of a boot or maybe a hiking boot. Super cute. Been wearing them a ton this year. And of course, I have to mention my weekday lash jeans. I'm so glad I discovered these. I have them in three different colors. I will link everything below, by the way, you guys. I'm pretty sure you know that I'm very thorough with links in the description. I love these jeans because they are sturdy, but very soft, comfortable, high quality denim. And I know this is relative, but they don't break the bank just because jeans can cost like well over a hundred dollars nowadays. And these aren't even close to that, especially because like these ones, I got for 50% off. They are just the perfect classic high-waisted jean, a true high waist with a slightly loose fit, which I love. Oh, seriously, I wear these jeans so much. Definitely very high up on the favorites list. My last fashion favorite is my Lululemon scrunchie, or I should say scrunchies, because I have a few of these now. And I know it might seem just really excessive or unnecessary to get a scrunchie from Lululemon, because you probably think like it's so expensive, you can get that anywhere for like a dollar. But I disagree, actually. These are made in like a kind of sweat wicking sporty fabric and they're really good for when I do high intensity interval training because it gets very sweaty, even like my scalp, you know, and my hair can get quite sweaty. The elastic is also a great size for me. I think I twist it around three times and it gives me really good hold without feeling like it's going to give me a receding hairline. Plus the texture of the fabric means it slides out of the hair quite easily without gripping or pulling out any hair. And then of course, I love the little bow detail on the top, which actually unties. Let me show you, see? I can toss this in the washing machine. It air dries really quickly really like the perfect workout scrunchie. I love these. Moving on to beauty favorites, I have a couple of nail polishes. The first is of course, my favorite shade of pink by Kester Black. Surely I mentioned this last year and the year before that or however long I've been using this. It's just oh, that perfect balance of warm and cool toned pink 
and it's super opaque. I'll insert a photo here of how it looks with just one coat. I just love this brand and I do have a discount code as well. It's Sophie10 if you wanna get 10% off. I will put it here on the screen and I'll link it below as well. And my second favorite is Rose by Mavala. As you can see from both my favorites, like they're very like beaten up and they're almost gone uh, because I use them so much. But yeah, this is my favorite super pale pink pearlescent and I always layer it with my Kester Black and it is so pretty. And next I have a fragrance which I mentioned in my USA haul from last year and it is my Ted Baker Sweet Treat fragrance in the scent Mia. I love the Sweet Treats collection. They are very sweet just like the name suggests so if you don't like sweet fragrances probably not for you and the packaging is so cute. I'm always looking for cute fragrances I can put on display on my vanity table and this one is just perfect for that. I love the little gold stopper. If I like hold it up against my black t-shirt, you can kind of see it a bit better. I have tried to use it sparingly because I wanted it to last, but I should be able to pick up a new one soon. I can't believe I forgot to mention this one when I was filming this video, but of course it's my Charlotte Tilbury Legendary Brows. I've gone through two tubes this year and I'm due for another. I wear it every single day. It's the perfect shade for my blonde eyebrows without being too dark. I've got it in the shade Bridget. And the wand is nice and small, so I can apply little strokes to fill in my entire brows if I want to, or just apply a light swipe over the top for just a tiny bit of a tint. My first lifestyle favorite is kind of a techie thing. I've only been using it for a month or two, but it works so well that I had to mention it. It's this pair of little feet for your laptop. Laptop cooling stand is what it says on the packaging. They are these little sticky feet that you attach to your laptop and you can fold them out and it elevates your laptop to help it stay cool. Before I got these, I was literally like using a random lids and boxes of like little boxes and things to elevate my computer. And when I did that, it always would cool down really quickly. So I thought surely there's like little feet I can attach. And that's how I found these and they help so much. And they also elevate your laptop in a way that makes it really nice to type on and then when you're not using them they fold down flat against the laptop so they won't get in the way and I was just so impressed with how strong the adhesive is I thought they were going to fall off within like an hour but they stick on so well and they were like eight dollars I think for this pair of them I will see if I can find the original eBay link below next I have my diptyque candle feu de bois I haven't done a French class since I was in year seven so please forgive my potentially awful pronunciation this smells exactly like the name, like a wood fire. <laughs> I actually got this as a gift for one of my friends when I was in America last year because I loved how smoky and comforting it smelled. It's so nice to burn during winter time. And my sister took note of how much I liked it and she got me this for Christmas or my birthday this year. I don't remember. This is how much I burnt through winter this year. I have been savoring it because they are very expensive candles. So if you want your home to smell like a burning wood fire without a fireplace. You've got to try this candle. They are really expensive. They do have mini ones though, but the smell is just so accurate. Oh, it smells just like a ski lodge I've been to. Second lifestyle favorite is another Lululemon item. It's actually a Lululemon gym towel. So I have two of these and I honestly want to replace all of my gym towels with this towel because it is a super soft microfiber towel, which I really like for when I need to pat my face dry. It's so much nicer and more gentle on my skin than a typical gym towels. But one of the best things of all about these towels, the size, because like 90% of gym towels are way too big. I don't want to bring a freaking beach towel to the gym, okay? I just need like a small to medium sized towel. And I know people are going to say like, oh, Sophie, you can get a small microfiber towel for like $2 on eBay. I'm telling you, I have searched for so long on eBay for really nice quality small gym towels and none of them are as nice. Last lifestyle favorite I don't have here to hold up for you for two reasons. First of all, I ate them all. Second of all, I couldn't reorder any off iHerb because they have this summer no ship period for anything that is chocolate because they are worried it will melt on their way to you. They are the Little Secrets dark chocolate pieces and they are like vegan M&Ms. The peanut ones are just like peanut M&Ms. They are so good. Oh my gosh, such a good movie snack. I love these. 
I seriously need to reorder some ASAP. Now let's talk TV shows and movies. Starting off with TV shows, we have Dirty John, which I think is a 2018 series. I remember seeing ads for that when I was in America last year, but I watched it this year because I found it on Netflix this year and really enjoyed that one. It is a drama thriller series. It's based on true events. It's about a woman who meets a guy online. She's swept off her feet by how charming he is and then things turn ugly. It has some quite shocking moments in it as well. Well, so really enjoyed it. Next is The Sinner season two and it follows the same detective as in season one investigating a new case and I can't really talk about this one much without spoilers but it's about a child and a cult that doesn't spoil anything, but it was really good. A series of unfortunate events. I finished that very early in the year. I actually had to go back and look at my Netflix viewing history to remember some of these. And I loved these books as a kid. I still love them as an adult. So naturally the TV show was kind of a default favorite, but if you haven't heard of it, definitely read the books first. The OA part two is another one from earlier in the year. It's hard to summarize, but Wikipedia says it is a mystery drama web television series with science fiction, supernatural and fantasy elements. And I can't talk about part two without spoiling part one. It is such a unique series. There is nothing else like it. Hashtag save the OA. I'm so sad that Netflix is not picking it up for a third part. Ozark might be my top TV show favorite that I watched this year, even though the episodes were from 2017 and 2018. It is just such an awesome show and not enough people are talking about it. It is a crime drama series and it involves money laundering and a drug cartel. That's all you need to know. I didn't really know much else about it except that when I started watching it and that was the perfect amount of knowledge to have. Awesome series. Hopefully season three is coming out pretty soon. I highly recommend it. I have to mention Kath and Kim because my sister and I rewatched the entire series and all of the movies this year. It's a comedy series about a mother and daughter. It's primarily about these two characters Characters, and they live in the suburbs of Melbourne, Australia. And it's set in the like early to mid 2000s, which is when it was shot and when it was released. It's very nostalgic and kind of comforting to watch somehow, especially if you've ever lived in suburban Australia. It actually takes me back to when I used to live in Brisbane. Aside from that, it's hilarious. It's a very famous show and it has a lot of typical Australian culture and slang in it. So you should definitely watch it if you wanna learn a bit more about that. Moving on to movies, the first one, I have to mention is the favorite. I had to check my diary on my Letterboxd account. You can follow me if you like to check of all the movies that I'd seen this year and like see what I rated them so I could remember for the video. When I heard this was directed by, oh gosh, pronunciation. I knew I had to go see it because he directed another movie I really like called The Lobster and he has a very unique style. I think it's quite polarizing and the favorite is still very different from The Lobster. It's a period black comedy film and it's about two sisters that are both competing for the favor of the queen. One is after power, one is after status. It would be great essay material. When I was watching this in the cinema, I was highly engaged the entire time. Really brilliant acting as well. So Toy Story 4, need I say more? I don't even need to give a synopsis on this. It's Toy Story. It's gonna be my favorite no matter what. It's Disney, it's Pixar. It's so cute. I loved it. I actually need to go watch it again. The graphics were also so amazing. The way that they create light blows my mind. It just gets better every time. Now the moment I'm sure a lot of you have been waiting for, we're going to talk horror movies. First of all, we have The Clove Hitch Killer, and this is about two teenagers in a small town who are investigating a local serial killer. And I will just say that the Google synopsis and probably the trailer give away way too much. If you haven't seen this movie, don't Google it. Just trust me, go watch it. A very underrated movie. My sister managed to find this film. I've never seen anyone talking about it anywhere, but it was really good. Next up is Cam, which is a Netflix film. And it's a horror movie about a cam girl who is kind of threatened by a doppelganger who is another cam girl. And it was inspired, I think, by the concept of deep fakes. It's very unique and unpredictable. It's unlike any other film I've ever seen. Please watch it. 
Let me know what you think, or if you've already seen it, let me know what you think in the comments. And speaking of doppelgangers, of course, I have to mention us. Great actors, great music, great concept. It's about a family who are stalked by a group of masked strangers when they're on a vacation. That's all you really need to know. I never know how much to reveal when I'm talking about movies. I can't wait for the next Jordan Peele horror movie. He always does an amazing job. I loved Get Out as well. Next is not a TV show or a movie. It's a play. It's Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. First of all, hashtag keep the secrets. I will not be giving away any spoilers. I saw it in Melbourne in October. And at the time that I saw it, it was one of only three cities in the entire world that were showing the production, which is pretty cool. I hadn't read The Cursed Child before seeing it. I wanted to avoid any spoilers so I could fully enjoy and be like surprised by the play. Plus a lot of reviews had said that it was really designed to be on stage and it works a lot better on stage than if you read it. And sure, like maybe there's some holes in the story and it's not the most brilliantly written story or whatever, but for me, it was just so much fun to watch and I just enjoyed it because the effects were absolutely amazing. It was the best part of it for sure. And you would have seen me attend this production in my recent vlog, which I will link in a card above and below if you want to check that out. And I 100% want to go see it again. If you have any 2019 favorites you'd like to share with me, like TV shows, horror movies especially, anything you'd like to recommend, please leave it in a comment below. I love getting ideas from you guys because I've got so many good ones from you. If you guys would like me to continue doing favorites videos, give this video a thumbs up to let me know. Be sure to follow my Instagram. I'm trying to post more outfit photos. It will be here on the screen and linked below. Thank you guys for watching and hanging out with me and I will talk to you again very soon.